We're on the Loose Line Trail right here in the middle of Golden Valley looking for wild parsnip. For two reasons. One, it's a dangerous plant, but also the U is studying it and want your help as a citizen scientist. Flowers in the wild parsnip plants, the parsnip is related to the carrot and um, in that family, flowers have this shape. They grow up in clusters in what we call an umbel. So all of these individual flowers then are connected at a single point here. This is a very good example of wild parsnip st stem or stalk that has deep grooves. That's going to be distinct and other plants that are related won't have that. This is the leaf of the wild parsnip plant. It has leaflets that branch off periodically and this is the whole leaf. This plant in its first year, it's not going to develop flowers or stalks. It's going to just be leaves close to the ground, but this leaf is is just as, as dangerous as the adult plant. I always think of it as like looking like parsley or cilantro. What makes wild parsnip dangerous is that the sap of the plant reacts with sunlight to cause severe burns on skin. So don't try to pull it by hand. So how does someone get involved? Pesky Plant Trackers is the name of our citizen science project. And what is key about these plants is what we call their phenology. And that means seasonal change. So when these plants are developing flowers and fruits and seeds. We want to figure out its seasonal cycles in great detail so that we can then control it. What are your goals for numbers of people or area covered for the observation? Great question. Yeah, we want to cover all of Minnesota, but this is actually a nationwide effort. Thanks, Abby. Good job, Abby. Well, if you find wild parsnip in your yard and you want to remove it, we do have a link to instructions from the DNR on care11.com. Let's take another look.